Hi, everyone. I want to keep this short. You all know about the great products here at Old Time Radio DVD. Well, now's the time to purchase. Why now? Just can't afford to keep on doing this forever for free. So go to oldtimeradiodvd.com. Take advantage of our great pricing. Mother, why did Daddy switch to Postum? Your father says there's no caffeine in Postum, nothing to spoil your sleep. And your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free, and by Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest-selling brand flakes. They say a man's home is his castle. So possibly by the same token, you might say that a boy's room in the home is also his private domain. Take Bud Anderson, for example. He has always felt that his room upstairs in the white frame house on Maple Street was traditionally his personal property. That's why on this Saturday morning, we find young Bud protesting violently against an unprovoked invasion of his territory. Like this. Cut it out, will you? I don't go in your room and tear everything up, do I? Oh, stop grousing. I'm not hurting your old room. I'm just looking for a pin. I haven't got any pins. How do you ever find anything in this mess? Looks like an old gopher's nest. I don't go in your room and tear up everything. I'm not tearing up anything. What's in this box? Get out of there. That's my stuff. What are you doing with this old moth-eaten squirrel tail? That's a fox tail, and leave it alone. Well, you must have a pin in this junk somewhere. Holy cow. Wreck a guy's room looking for a pin. I've got to pin a bow on my blouse. Janie Liggett's aunt is visiting her from New York, and she's taking Janie and me to a tea this afternoon. It's very ultra-ultra. Tea? Ugh. Look, will you get out? I'm trying to build something. I haven't got any pins. I found one right here, smarty. Okay, hit the road. Janie's little cousin came along with her aunt. She's just about the right age for you. Stop, you're making me sick. (laughs) She's a real cute girl. You ought to see her. I've seen a girl. Hello. Hello. Hello, Joe. For Pete's sake, what's that? It's a telephone. Get out, will you? Where are the wires? It doesn't have any wires. It's an invention. I made it. With a cigar box? It's an invention. Works on airwaves. Joe's got one, too. I'm trying to call him. Will you get out? Ew, old stale cigar box. Dad! All right, don't raise the roof. I'll get out of your old room. What an old grumpy face. Darn women. Hello, Joe. Can you hear me, Joe? Hello. Hello. Did I leave my bow in here? Holy cow. (laughs) Kathy, have you seen my blue velvet bow? Hello, Joe. Hello? Which velvet bow? Hello, Joe. Hello? You know, the little blue one with the rhinestone clip in the center. Can you hear me, Joe? I didn't have it. Oh, creepers, here it is on the floor. Bud practically had his big foot on it. Look, I'm calling Joe. How can I hear him with everybody yakking? You're talking to that cigar box? (laughs) Yes. Is Joe in there? (laughs) No, he's at his house. Is my collar straight in the back, Kathy? Pull it up a little. Do you have to dress in here? I'm not dressing. I'm just using the mirror. This is my room. Well, this is the only room that has two mirrors where I can see in the back. Move that other mirror around a little, will you, Kathy? Hello, Joe. (laughs) Hello? (laughs) Your collar's still crooked in the back. I see it, but I can't reach it. Fix it for me, will you, Kathy? Joe? I can't reach it. We'll stand on a chair. Bud, can Kathy have your chair a minute? I'm sitting on it. (laughs) It'll only take a minute. 
I told Janie I'd be over in 15 minutes, and I'm five minutes late already. All right, here. Take my room, take my chair, use the mirrors, get perfume all over the place. No privacy anywhere. Women, women, this is the end. Where are you going, silly? Downstairs. This is the end. The guy gets pushed around just so long, and then bang, it's the end. I can't have anything anymore. Can't do anything without darn women walking in. What's all the uproar about? Have you got some cardboard, Dad? Cardboard? I'm going to make a sign. Well, come in the den. Maybe we can find something. What kind of a sign are you going to make? No women allowed. <laughs> oh? I'm going to put it on the door of my room, and I'm going to put a big lock on it. What's all this about no women allowed? Oh, it doesn't mean you, Mom. You're not a woman. <laughs> I'm not. What uh, seems to be the trouble, son? It's the end, that's all. Just the end. Women come into a guy's room. They take everything a guy's got. Well, now, bud, if it's Kathy and Betty... Women are women. We have them at school, every place. Well, I'll admit there are a number of them around. But you get used to it after a while. Not me. I'm through. This is the end. Oh, now, Bud, just because you've had a little argument with your sister. I didn't argue. I'm just going to put a lock on the door, and if a woman tries to come in, look out. What's wrong with old Bud? <laughs> All right, Bud. That was funny. Do it again, Bud. I think you'd better run along and play, Angel. She's got perfume on. Ugh. Oh, it's just a little cologne. I gave it to her. It hurts my nose. Run along, kitten. We want to talk to Bud. Okay. What a goose. I'll be back in a minute, dear. Kathy, did Betty leave? Yeah, she went over to Janie's. Now, let's have a little talk, son. Man to man. Yeah, no women. (laughs) I know that girls are bound to get on your nerves sometimes, but they're really not so bad. They are to me. Well, I know you feel that way right now. Yeah. But that's just because you're a little upset with Betty and Kathy. Now, you know there are some girls you like, bud. Nope. I don't like any girls. Well, there must be one or two at school that are kind of nice. Have you seen them? (laughs) No, but... Always uh... wiggling around and going, hee, hee, hee. Whispering to each other, yakety, yakety, yak. Oh, well, girls do that. I know, I know. And they're always simpering around, looking at their dumb old faces in a mirror. Who cares what they look like? Well... I don't. Why can't there just be guys in the world, like you and Joe and a lot of guys? Well, son, as you get older, you'll find... Girls are always trying to be so cute. (laughs) Walking around on those high heels, putting powder on their faces, pouring perfume all over. It makes a guy sick. I don't know. When I was your age, I knew a couple of little girls I thought were pretty nice. No kidding. You? Sure. I remember one was a little blonde. Had uh, kind of curly hair. Real cute. Ew. (laughs) But there's nothing wrong with liking girls. Well, I'm not going to. Dumb old girls. I think I'll go up and air out my room. Well, how'd you make out, dear? Oh. Do I have to get married? Is it a law? No. Good. I'm going to be a bachelor. And a hermit. I guess that answers your question, honey. Mm -hmm. Well, one of these days, he'll change his tune. I'm not too sure. You know, bud, when he gets something into his head... You wait. Some little girl will come along and wind him right around her finger. I don't know about that. If you think back to... Mother! I'm in the den, Betty. Mother, I was just over at Janie Liggett's, and hello, Father, her aunt was there. (laughs) Really? What is Hello, Princess, this aunt's name? (laughs) Oh, Father. What I wanted to tell you, Mother, Janie's cousin, little Jennifer March, is there with them, and they have simply no place for her to sleep. So I said it would be perfectly all right for her to come over here and stay with us. It will be all right, won't it? Why, I don't mind. I know Mrs. Liggett would do the same for us. How old is this little girl? We're a little short of baby food, you know. (laughs) Oh, she's not a baby. She's 12 or 13 and just as cute as a bug. Hello, Joe! (laughs) Hello? What is that? Oh, he's bellowing into that cigar box again. Well, let's see. We'll have to figure out where Jennifer's going to sleep. Hey, Joe! Hello? We could put her in with you, Betty, but then there's no place for Kathy. 
Mrs. Liggett insisted we shouldn't put ourselves out. Hello? Hello? You know Mrs. Liggett, Father. Just to say, hello. <laughs> hello? Hello? I heard him, Dad. I heard him. Hello? Hello? But that was me. <laughs> oh. We have the cot we can put down in the playroom. Oh, we couldn't ask her to sleep down there, Father. Well, let's face it. The only thing we can do is give her Bud's room and let Bud sleep on the cot in the playroom. <laughs> Bud is going to be delighted to hear that. Just delighted. What am I going to be delighted to hear? Oh, hello, Bud. <laughs> What's that for? Bud, stop this growling at people. You're beginning to act like a crotchety old lion. I wish I was an old lion. I'd have a cage. No girls running in and out. Anyway, I'm going to get a padlock on my door, and any girl that tries to... Bud. Huh? We have a little problem, son. I told you about Jennifer, Janie's cousin. Yeah. Well, she's coming over to stay with us for a few days. Another girl? <laughs> coming here? Oh, no. Well, now, just keep your feathers down. They have no place for her to sleep at the Liggett. There's no place here. Bud, we're going to set up the cot in the playroom. You gonna let her walk around the house? Oh, creeper. Better not come around my room. Bud, quit waving your arms. The fact is, Jennifer will have to take your room, and you'll have the cot in the playroom. I'm being thrown out? Out of my own room? You're not being thrown out. There's no other way we can arrange it. And you've slept on the cot before. Holy cow, why can't she sleep downstairs? Put her in the basement. Mother, will you please control him? Bud, little Jennifer is going to be our guest. I object. Bud Anderson, if you so much as open your mouth while she's here, Mother, make him be nice to her. Perfume all over my room. Don't worry about the perfume. When she leaves, we'll burn some old shoes up there. <laughs> Get it just the way you like it. But she'll be here in the house. Whatever, stupid. She isn't poison. I'll have to look at her. All right, I'll get you a pair of dark glasses. Oh, I'm sick. What's the matter now? Arrgh. Bud, for heaven's sake. Now, stop this carrying on now. We've had enough. Do I have to sleep down in the playroom? No, you can sleep in the piano if you'd be more comfortable. <laughs> Do I have to stay in the house? Where's he going? There's a big tree out in back you could sleep in. I'm going to call up Joe. You going over there? I'm going to borrow his tent and his sleeping bag. Oh, now, Bud, wait. If that Juniper, or whatever her name is, is coming, I'm going. Well, where do you think you're going? If she's going to be inside, I'm going to be outside. Bud, where are you planning to go? Out in the backyard. I'll pitch the tent, put the sleeping bag in it. That's where I'll stay, out there. Oh, Bud, don't be an old stick in the mud. See you later, Dad. You going over to Joe's? Yeah. Well, you can't carry a tent back alone, can you? Yeah. Well, don't you want us to drive you over? No. <sighs> there goes the world's most stubborn boy. Look at him prowling down the driveway. Why doesn't he get a haircut? <laughs> you know something, Margaret? What, dear? Bud not only sounds like a grumpy old lion, he's beginning to look like one. <laughs> Well, it's easy to see why Bud is acting like a grumpy old lion. But speaking of grumpiness, let's hear what our friend Ed Prentice has to say on the subject. Ever find yourself acting grumpy and cross, ready to fly off the handle at the least little thing? It often happens when you don't get a good night's sleep, doesn't it? Well, you're not being able to sleep nights may be due to the caffeine in coffee or tea. Could well be. And if that's your problem, Postum is your answer. You see, instant Postum contains no caffeine, none at all. There's nothing in Postum to give you coffee nerves or spoil your sleep. Now, that's important because caffeine is a drug, a nerve stimulant that may leave you too nervous and upset to sleep well. And while lots of folks can handle coffee or tea without trouble, others can't. If you're one of those who can't, switch to caffeine-free Postum. See if instant Postum doesn't have you sleeping better, looking and feeling like a million in no time. 
And say, why not share your enjoyment of Postum with the whole family? Tastes well. And the kids can drink instant Postum as much as they want. There's nothing to harm them. So how about getting a big money-saving jar tomorrow? Instant Postum. Made instantly in your cup. You see that tent out in the backyard at 607 Maple Street? That's where young Bud Anderson is going to be living for a few days. Bud, it seems, has developed an almost hostile attitude toward girls. And since little Jennifer March is coming over to spend a couple of days with the Andersons, in Bud's room, incidentally, Bud, the woman hater, is packing up bag and baggage and moving out. Right now, Bud's upstairs gathering up his belongings, and Jim and Margaret are down in the kitchen listening to the sounds from above. Like this. What's he doing up there, tearing out the plumbing? Well, I don't know. He came in with a big box and went stomping upstairs. Said he was going to pack. Well, this worries me a little, honey. I don't want the boy to grow up to be a grouchy old bachelor. Now give him time, dear. He'll meet a girl one of these days, and she'll have our grumpy lion purring like a kitten. How big was that box he took upstairs? Mm, it was an apple box, I guess. Why? Sounds like he's trying to put the bed into it. <laughs> Well, here he comes. I know when I was Bud's age, if a cute little girl was coming to visit, I'd be up getting my hair combed, getting slicked up. Oh, really? Tell me more, dear. Well, it was nothing. My mother insisted that I do it. Oh, I see. Well, I'm going. What in the world do you have in that box? A lot of valuable stuff. Old automobile horn. All of tin foil, cigar boxes, magazines. What are you dragging all this stuff outside for? They could be stolen. Stolen? <laughs> Out of your room? I don't trust that janitor, March. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer. Well, I'm going. If any girls start to come out to my tent, they better look out. Oh? Joe's going to lend me his dog. He hates girls. Who, Joe or the dog? The dog. Big cocker spaniel. Bites. Got big teeth. Well, I'm gone. Goodbye. I hope you and the cocker spaniel with the big teeth have an enjoyable stay in the tent. Keep yourself warm now. You sure you have enough blankets? Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, that's going to be a picture for you. Bud sitting out there in that tent beside a moth-eaten cocker spaniel with a mouth full of teeth. <laughs> and you say girls are hard to figure out. Bud isn't hard to figure out. He's just stubborn. Mother! We're in the kitchen, Betty. I brought Jennifer over. Jenny, this is my mother and father. How do you do, Mrs. Anderson? Mr. Anderson? Hello, Jenny. Well, hello there. My, you have such a pretty house. I hope I'm not causing you a lot of inconvenience. Why, no, not at all. I want you to make yourself right at home. When we came in, I noticed a tent out in the backyard. Do you keep things out there? There's an old thing out there right now. <laughs> Our uh, son Bud uh, stays out there occasionally. Uh, he likes to be outdoors. Jenny, just don't pay any attention to Bud. He's strange but harmless. Bud's just a boy. You know how boys are. I certainly do. If he takes after you, Mr. Anderson, he must be very nice looking. <clears throat> well, I couldn't say as to that. Come on, Jenny. I'll show you your room. Okay. Thank you for letting me stay with you, Mrs. Anderson. Well, we're happy to have you, Jenny. Well. Yes, dear. You said that. Now, there's a lovely, intelligent little girl. <laughs> well, I'll have to admit she's a strikingly beautiful child. Did you see those eyes? Yeah. She knows how to use them, too. Did you ever see such long eyelashes? Every time she blinked, I could feel the breeze. <laughs> oh, that gorgeous complexion. Wish I could trade with her. Well, here comes Leo the lion again. Hi. How are things in the backyard? Okay, Joe can't lend me his dog, though. What happened? Doesn't the dog work on Saturday? <laughs> Joe didn't want to send him over to stay all night. Oh? He's afraid of the dark. <laughs> 
Probably worried about his big teeth. Doesn't want to make a mistake in the dark. Uh, bite a post or something. I've got to go upstairs and get my pliers. Why are the pliers? I'm putting some barbed wire around the tent. Be back in a minute. Better be careful upstairs, bud. Dangerous territory. Yeah. Well, if Kathy or Betty is in my room, I... Oh, oh excuse me. I was just coming downstairs and... Well, you must be Betty's brother, Bud. Yeah. Uh, that's she. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm her. <laughs> that is... Uh... <laughs> yeah. I'm Jennifer March. Hello, Bud. <laughs> oh? I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know I was taking your room. You am? <laughs> I mean, uh... <laughs> I are? <laughs> and you have to sleep out in that old tent just because of me. Oh, gee, uh, I, uh, I don't care. I feel awfully small beside you. You're so big. Oh, <laughs> yeah? Bud! Jenny, don't pay any attention to him. He's just an old grouch. But he didn't... I didn't do anything. Come on, Jenny, in the den and see my scrapbook. All right, but... I want to show you my dolls, too. Don't you be mean to Jennifer, bud. I'll be upstairs, but I'll be listening. What happened? Bud? I'm coming. What's wrong, bud? Where are the pliers? Pliers? That's what you went upstairs for. I did? You look like you've been hit over the head with a mallet. I never saw a girl like that. Oh, you met Jennifer. That explains it. What do you think of her, son? Well, she's... Well... I don't know. She certainly is. <laughs> well, I'm glad you met. She was looking forward to seeing you. She... She's pretty. <laughs> yeah, Betty told you. Not like just girls. She's real nice. Look, I have an idea. I don't think Jenny's doing anything this afternoon. Why don't you take her to the movie? Take her? Why not? Oh, I think that's a nice idea. She'd love to go with you. Well, how would I know if she wants to go? Go in and ask her. Just go in and ask her? Well, certainly. Go on. What'll I say? Just say, would you like to go to the movies? I don't think I can say that. <laughs> of course you can. Now go on in there. I can't, Mom. She's in the den with Kathy. I can't ask her with Kathy in there. Well, I'll go get Kathy out. You come on in. You think I should, Dad? Why, sure. Just go in and be natural. Relax. She won't hurt you. Well, okay, I'll... Quiet. I'll advance you the money for the tickets. Don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, you in there? Oh, hello, bud. Sure. Uh, is it, uh, all right if I come in? I wish you would. Oh, uh, well, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Pretty nice day. Yes, it is. Nice yesterday, too. <laughs> yes, it was. Yep. Did you come in to ask me something? Yeah. Want to go to the movies? With you? Oh, I'd like to go. You would? I'll be right back. Where are you going? What happened, bud? She said yes. What'll I do now? <laughs> What'll you do? Well, take her. Well, how'd it work out, bud? You ask her? Yeah, she'll go, but... Holy cow. Now, for Pete's sake, relax, bud. You're a very lucky boy. Yeah, but what do I do? Just go. I don't know. She, she looks at me and... Oh, gosh. <laughs> bud, are you in the kitchen? Oh, oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm ready to go if you are. Sure. Well, I'm ready if you are. 
Bud's taking me to the movies, Mrs. Anderson. Well, that's nice. Have a good time. Goodbye, Mr. Anderson. Goodbye. Enjoy yourselves, kids. Shall we go, Bud? Yeah, let's go. Bud, that's the broom closet. (laughs) Oh. Bud, would you like to take my arm? Yeah, (laughs) okay. (laughs) Bye. See you later. Goodbye. Don't be late for dinner. We won't. Come here to the kitchen window, dear. (laughs) Will you look at that? I think they make a very attractive couple. I'm not sure if Bud has her arm or she has his. (laughs) Oh, what did I tell you about our grumpy old lion? Uh, You were right. Little Jenny March has everything under control. Reminds me of an old saying. Oh? March came in and the lion went out like a lamb. For goodness sake, eat post brand flakes. So good and so good for you. Mother, that's a swell tune to remember whenever you shop. Because new post 40% bran flakes really are good and so good for you. You see, something wonderful has happened to bran. Yes, new post bran flakes now have a new delicious magic oven flavor, a tempting crisper texture that many folks say make it the best tasting cereal ever. But more important than just tasting good, post bran flakes will give your family those important keep regular benefits that bran is famous for. So, when you shop this weekend, buy new Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes. See for yourself. They're good, and so good for you. Well, as evening settles over the white frame house on Maple Street, there's no longer any doubt. The lion has been tamed. The tent which stood in the backyard has been dismantled. And there are other great changes taking place in the household. Witness the scene in the upstairs hall. Margaret. Margaret. What is it, dear? Come here a minute. I want you to see something. What? Be quiet now. Just look through the doorway into Betty's room. Who's that man standing in front of her mirror? Guess. Good heavens, it's Bud. Yep. Has his new suit on? White shirt, tie. Uh, I didn't recognize him. His hair is combed. (laughs) Well, there's proof for you. Proof of what? Never underestimate the power of a woman. The sponsors of Father Knows Best join with the cast in congratulating our star, Robert Young, who was honored this week by the National Safety Council with its special public service award for his outstanding work in the field of highway traffic safety during 1952. Congratulations, Bob. We know you will continue this fine work. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest selling brand Flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Helen Strom as Kathy, Dorothy Lovett, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, and Valerie Alberts. It's the best hot cereal you ever ate. Post Wheat Meal, the best hot cereal anybody ever ate. Rich and delicious with a nut-like flavor you'll never want to miss. And hot post wheat meal is so good for you. Packed full of solid whole wheat nourishment, especially good for children. Post wheat meal takes just three minutes to cook. Get the big family economy size with a picture of Roy Rogers on the package. Post wheat meal. The best hot cereal you ever ate. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West. 
This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on NBC.